APCO Educational Topic Number 33, Family Planning. Of all pregnancies in the United States, 50% are unplanned. Family planning, as defined by the World Health Organization, allows individuals and couples to anticipate and attain their desired number of children and the spacing and timing of their births. This is achieved through use of contraceptive methods and the treatment of involuntary infertility. A woman's ability to space and limit her pregnancies has a direct impact on her health and well-being as well as on the outcome of each pregnancy. The objectives of this video are to describe the mechanism of action and effectiveness of contraceptive methods, describe the benefits, risks, and use for each contraceptive method including emergency contraception, describe barriers to effective contraceptive use and to reduction of unintended pregnancy, describe the methods of male and female surgical sterilization, explain the risks and benefits of female surgical sterilization procedures. Let's start by discussing the primary mechanisms of action of commonly used contraceptions. Here is a drawing of an ovary releasing an egg into the fallopian tube. The first mechanism of contraception inhibits the development and release of this egg from the ovaries. The oral contraception pill, patch, and ring all work by inhibiting ovulation. If ovulation occurs, the egg then travels in the fallopian tube, and the second mechanism is the blocking of the sperm and the egg from uniting by a mechanical, chemical, or physical barrier. This could be a male or female condom, spermicide, diaphragm, or cervical cap. A secondary mechanism of some contraceptive methods may alter the ability of the fertilized egg to implant and grow, for example, if an IUD is used as emergency contraception. The only 100% effective form of contraception is abstinence. All other methods have varying levels of efficacy. An important concept to review is the difference between method failure rate and typical failure rate. Method failure rate refers to the inherent chance of failure when the method is used correctly 100% of the time. Typical failure rate, often higher, refers to the failure rate when a method is used by actual women, factoring in human error and compliance. The decision regarding which type of contraception to use will include many factors that will include more than just efficacy. Let's use three patients, Inita, Effecta, and Contracepta, to frame this discussion. What will factor into their decisions regarding contraception? Cost, medical history, typical bleeding pattern, availability, side effects, and or partner participation. We need to balance both the psychosocial and medical components when deciding upon a contraception plan. Let's now begin APCO's review of contraception, from most to least effective. Number one, the long-acting reversible contraceptive methods, or LARCs. These include the intrauterine devices and the implant. They are over 99% effective, and there is virtually no difference between typical and actual failure rates. Intrauterine devices, or contraceptives, are inserted by a healthcare provider, and the IUD is located in the fundal portion of the endometrium. The strings are trimmed to sit outside of the external os of the cervix. There are two forms of IUDs, the copper and the progesterone IUD. The intrauterine device with the progesterone levonorgestrel works primarily by thickening cervical mucus to prevent sperm from entering the uterus. There are two devices currently available that last for three or five years. Most women will have lighter menstrual cycles or may become amenorrheic with these levonorgestrel IUDs. The copper IUD works by creating an unfavorable environment for sperm to fertilize an egg. It lasts for 10 years. The most common side effects are heavier and crampier periods. Fun fact, the IUD is the most commonly used contraception among female gynecologists. The implant contains the progesterone edonogestrel and is a small plastic rod about the size of a matchstick that is inserted into the upper arm. It works by inhibiting ovulation. It is effective for up to three years and the most common side effect is irregular bleeding and spotting for the duration of the insertion. All of the LARC methods can be removed prior to the official end date and there will be a rapid return of fertility after removal to baseline. So the LARCs are great contraception for women who want optimal protection against pregnancy, but who may or may not desire future fertility. A LARC would be a great option for our patient Effecta. She is newly married, about to start her surgical residency, and wants to start her family after her training is complete. If future fertility is absolutely ruled out as a possibility, completely and totally, then female and male sterilization can be considered. Our patient Contracepta absolutely wants to see no, hear no, and talk of no further pregnancies. Female and male sterilizations are permanent procedures to prevent pregnancy. They are both over 99% effective. Male sterilization is an outpatient procedure where the right and left vas deferens are ligated to prevent sperm from entering the rest of the seminal fluid. 
A semen analysis is collected three to four months and 20 ejaculates after the vasectomy to make sure that no viable sperm is present. There are two types of female sterilization procedures. A tubal ligation is when the fallopian tube is ligated with clips or rings or a small segment of the fallopian tube is removed. This can be performed laparoscopically or during the immediate postpartum time this can be performed through a small mini laparotomy incision. The second option is hysteroscopic tubal occlusion. This procedure is performed vaginally either in the operating room or in clinic. Metal coils are inserted into the fallopian tubes and scar tissue develops effectively blocking the tubes. To ensure that the tubes are fully occluded, women need to have a hysterosalpingogram performed three months after the procedure. The risks of female sterilization include increased risk of ectopic pregnancy with a 10-year cumulative probability of ectopic pregnancy after tubal ligation of 7.3 per 1,000. Regret is another risk after sterilization. Risk indicators for regret about decision for sterilization include age less than 25, sterilization at the time of cesarean section, low parity, minority status, change in marital status, low access or incomplete information about the procedure, or making the decision under pressure from a spouse or because of medical indication. There are also non-contraceptive benefits of tubal ligation that include decreased lifetime risk of ovarian cancer and some protection against public inflammatory disease. Let's move next to number three, the Depo-Provera injection. This is a progesterone injection that lasts for three months and is about 97% effective. Women return to clinic every three months to receive the shot. Many women become amenorrheic on Depo-Provera and it can take several months for fertility to return after terminating this method. It is important to counsel patients that the average weight gain with the Depo-Provera shot is 10 pounds. Number four, estrogen progesterone contraceptives. These methods are 92% effective at preventing pregnancy. These include the oral contraception pills, the patch, and the vaginal ring. All of these contraceptions require daily, weekly, or monthly action from the patient. Contraindications to using estrogen-containing contraception include migraine with aura, history of blood clots, personal history of breast cancer, or liver disease. For women over age 35, this list is expanded to include women who smoke, have hypertension, or have migraines. Next up, number five, are the barrier methods of contraception, which include male and female condoms, diaphragms, and spermicide. Their rates of efficacy are variable, ranging from 71 to 84 percent on typical use due to the potential for user error. Male and female condoms and abstinence are the only forms of contraception that also work to protect against sexually transmitted infections. Let's move on to other options for contraception. Natural family planning can be effective for highly motivated patients with equally motivated partners. This method involves selective abstinence during the time in a woman's cycle when she is most fertile. Ovulation are measured by the calendar or by symptoms such as basal body temperature or cervical mucus. Breastfeeding is another form of natural family planning. In order to have effective inhibition of ovulation, a woman must breastfeed every three hours and remain amenorrheic. Progesterone-only forms of contraception are safe to use while breastfeeding. We will conclude this video with a discussion of emergency contraception. Emergency contraception may be used for women after unprotected sexual intercourse. The mechanisms of action are preventing ovulation and fertilization. Plan B involves two pills of 0.75 mg of levonorgestrel. Plan B one step consists of one pill of 1.5 mg of levonorgestrel. Ideally, these should be taken within 72 hours of unprotected intercourse, but can be taken up to 120 hours after unprotected intercourse. The failure rate for Plan B is 1.1%. A prescription-only formulation, ELLA, uses the selective progesterone receptor modulator Eulopristal acetate 30 mg. This can be used up to 120 hours after unprotected intercourse as well. The copper IUD can also be used as an option for emergency contraception and has a failure rate of approximately 0.1%. This concludes the APCO video on family planning. We have discussed the mechanisms and potential contraception options for our patients. It is important to consider the patient as a whole when deciding upon a contraception plan.